in the dimly lit recesses of the galactic archives, where the pulse of ancient data echoed through the vast silent halls, Zalan, a Nubian scholar of antiquities, wandered with a purpose that disturbed the stillness. The archives were a sanctuary of knowledge, stretching endlessly under the soft glow of bioluminescent lights, shelves stacked with artifacts from a thousand worlds, each with its own story of civilizations long vanished into the dust of time. Zalan's fascination was not with the well-trodden history celebrated in the gleaming displays of the archive's harp, but with the forgotten relics shrouded in the shadows of neglect. It was here, in a forsaken corner far removed from the frequented paths, where the lesser acquisitions were deemed trivial by many whispered secrets of untold value. The air was thick with the musk of old leather and the metallic tang of ancient machinery, a symphony of scents that filled Zalan with comforting anticipation. As his fingers danced across the dusty surfaces of shelved artefacts, a faint light caught his eye a neglected data crystal, its surface dulled by layers of cosmic dust, barely visible under a flickering light. This crystal, unassuming and seemingly insignificant, was cradled by the dark like a lost gem, awaiting rediscovery. Its age was palpable, not just in the dust accumulation, but in the worn engraving that time had nearly erased, leaving only the ghost of ancient galactic script visible upon its surface. With a reverence reserved for the sacred, Zalan lifted the crystal, feeling the surprising heft of its history. The weight of untold stories pulsed through his veins as he carried it across the archive, past the rows of whispering relics, to his workstation, a chaotic sanctuary of holographic screens and scattered ancient tomes. As he set the crystal into the ancient tech reader, a relic he had painstakingly restored, the room hummed to life. Holograms flickered as cascades of data spiralled into the air, the ancient code translating itself into the Federation standard language with a luminescent flourish. In this quiet corner of the galaxy, amidst whispers of the past and the hum of aged technology, the stage was set for a discovery that would echo through the cosmos, reigniting the flames of a long-forgotten tale, the mystery of the lost human colony. As the hologram stabilised, a flurry of symbols and images cascaded around Zalan, each fragment a piece of the cosmic puzzle he was about to unravel. Once deemed insignificant, the data crystal thrummed with life, revealing records of an ancient civilization so thoroughly erased from collective memory that only this lone artifact held its echo. The records spoke of a civilization called humans and enigmatic species, whose existence had once stretched across the known galaxy. These humans were not just participants, but pivotal players in the Grand Tableau, interstellar politics and cultural exchange. However, their chapter had ended abruptly, a catastrophic event referred to only as the Great Aresha, casting them into the shadows of history. Zalan's heart raced as he scrolled through the digital manuscripts, the ancient texts flickering before his eyes. The records were fragmented and tantalizingly incomplete. They spoke of human achievements, their technologies, and the worlds they had inhabited, yet offered no clues about their sudden disappearance or the specifics of the calamity that had struck them. Driven by a deep-seated need to understand, Zalan delved deeper into the archives, cross-referencing the newfound data with existing historical records. Nights turned into days as he pieced together the scattered references, his mind ablaze with theories and possibilities. The more he discovered, the more elusive the truth seemed. The Federation's historical archives, vast as they were, held no further mention of the humans beyond these cryptic snippets. Yet, a single word, repeated across several of the recovered documents, caught his attention and fueled his obsession Atlantis. This name, associated with human civilization, appeared alongside descriptions of a society that had achieved a zenith of technological and cultural prosperity before facing its abrupt downfall. The mystery consumed Zylan, and his every moment was devoted to uncovering the fate of these lost beings. The realization that such a significant civilization could be wiped from history and memory ignited a fierce determination in him. He felt a kinship with these forgotten humans, their legacy lost to time, as were so many of the artifacts he cherished. Fueled by a mix of scholarly passion, and a personal connection to the forgotten, Zalan prepared to present his findings to those who wielded the power 
to explore the Galactic Council further. Despite the potential for scepticism and dismissal, he believed the rediscovery of human civilization could offer invaluable insights and perhaps lessons about the fragility of memory and the resilience needed to overcome catastrophes. He compiled his evidence with meticulous care, crafting an argument he hoped would resonate with the diverse and often divided council members. His proposal was audacious, and it was a mission to find and reintegrate the lost human colony into the Galactic Federation. Such an endeavor, if successful, would not only expand their understanding of the galaxy's history, but could potentially bridge gaps between numerous civilizations under the Federation's umbrella. As Zaylin stood before the Council Council, his presentation ready, he felt the weight of the ancient data crystal in his pocket, a reminder of the forgotten past and the hope of a new beginning. This was his moment to change the course of history, to restore what had been lost to the annals of the universe. Inside the Grand Chamber of the Galactic Council, a hushed anticipation hung in the air as Zalan, the scholar from Nuvia, prepared to present his findings. The Council Chamber, a marvel of interstellar architecture, was designed to reflect the unity and diversity of the Galactic Federation. Representatives of various species and civilizations, each with unique forms and thought patterns, filled the concentric circles of the auditorium, their eyes fixed on the central podium where Zalan stood. The dim lighting of the chamber cast long shadows, mirroring the seriousness of the occasion. Zalan's heart pounded in his chest, not just from nerves, but from the enormity of what he was about to propose. He activated the holographic projector, and images of the dusty data crystal and its cryptic contents filled the air above the council. Esteemed members of the council's island began, his voice steady despite the fluttering in his chest. Today I bring before you a forgotten fragment of our vast galaxy's history, a lost civilization, not just any, but one that was once a cornerstone of our galactic federation. The images shifted, showing snippets of the human civilization's artistic representations of their city's technologies and people. These beings, known as humans, were victims of what has been termed the Great Erasure, a catastrophic event that wiped them from our collective memory. Murmurs filled the chamber as council members exchanged sceptical glances. Salem pressed on, knowing he walked the thin line between dismissal as a fringe theorist and acknowledgement as a pioneer. Why does this matter? Zalan paused, letting the question resonate. Because history forgotten is history bound to be repeated. Rediscovering the humans could not only restore a lost chapter of our Federation, still it could also offer insights into surviving and thriving post-catastrophe. It could strengthen our unity by showing that even the forgotten are not truly lost. Many faces showed scepticism, their expressions a mixture of intrigue and doubt. A member of the Council Council, a Thalosian with reflective scales, raised a question that echoed the concerns of many and what of the resources this quest would require. Is the pursuit of shadows worth the definitive costs? Salen nodded, expecting this pragmatic approach. The journey is fraught with uncertainties, but the potential rewards of technological advancements, strengthening of our societal bonds, and the moral victory of restoring a lost civilization are worth the initial investment. We are a federation of explorers, thinkers, and, and rebuilders. Is it not our duty to seek out those who were once us? I am Marinian delegate, known for their economic acumen, joined the discourse. What you propose is not merely an exploration, but an act of archaeological resurrection. The implications could extend beyond mere knowledge, redefining our understanding of resilience and adaptation. The room settled into a thoughtful silence each member contemplating the potentialities presented by Zalin's proposal. His final slide showed the ancient data crystal, its light seeming to pulse with potential. This crystal, Zalin concluded, is not just a beacon from the past, but a key to our future. Let us not shy away from the unknown, but embrace it as our ancestors did boldly and with an unwavering spirit of discovery. After a prolonged deliberation, the council voted, the decision was close, reflecting the divide in opinions. Still, in the end, Zylan's passion and the tantalizing promise of rediscovering a lost piece of their collective heritage swayed them. With a reluctant but eventual approval, 
Zeilen was tasked with leading an unprecedented mission to find and hopefully reintegrate the lost human colony into the Galactic Federation. As the council chamber cleared, Zeilen felt relief and the daunting realisation of the journey ahead. He had convinced the council, but now he must face the vast, uncharted cosmos, armed with nothing but an ancient crystal and a conviction that the lost humans awaited rediscovery somewhere in the darkness of space. In the shadow of the Galactic Council's momentous decision, preparations for the daring mission to rediscover the lost human colony began at a frenetic pace. The Galactic Federation, a mosaic of countless species and technologies, pooled its resources to outfit what would become their most audacious expedition yet. The vessel chosen for this monumental task was the Star Glider, epitomizing the pinnacle of Federation technology. Zylan, now designated as the mission commander, oversaw the assembly of his crew with meticulous care. Each member was selected not only for their expertise, but also for their ability to endure the uncertainties of deep space exploration. The crew was a tapestry of the Federation's finest, a blend of scientists, historians, linguists, and diplomats, each representing the diverse civilizations of the galaxy. As the Star Glider's final preparations were underway, Zalan walked its corridors, familiarizing himself with the ship that would be their home, laboratory, and lifeline. The ship was a marvel of engineering, equipped with advanced navigation systems, deep space communication arrays, and life support ecosystems capable of sustaining the crew for years. Its hull shimmered with a reflective coating that could adapt to the cosmic environment, camouflaging the ship against the backdrop of stars. The departure was set at the Galactic Federation's central spaceport, a sprawling complex orbiting the capital planet. As the departure day dawned, the spaceport buzzed with activity, and media drones flitted about, capturing the historic moment as crowds gathered to witness the launch. Zalan addressed the assembly, broadcasting across countless worlds via the Federation's media network. Today we embark on a journey, not just through space, but through history, Zalan proclaimed, the star glider gleaming behind him. Our mission is to bridge the vast gulf of forgotten time and space, to reconnect with a lost part of our galactic family. We sail into the unknown, promising to seek, discover and understand. With the formalities concluded, the crew boarded the star glider. The ship's engines hummed to life, and a low thrum resonated through the hull, growing steadily as the fusion reactors reached their operating threshold. The crowd's roar faded into a hushed awe as the star glider's thrusters ignited, bathing the launch pad in brilliant light. The ship ascended slowly at first, then with increasing speed as it slipped the bonds of gravity. It passed through the orbital layers of spacecraft and satellites, the last vestiges of known territory. Ahead lay the vast, uncharted stretches of the deep cosmos, dotted with stars and nebulae, each potential clue or dead end on their quest. As the star glider soared into the depths of space, Zalen stood at the observation deck, watching the stars stretch into lines as they entered hyperspace. The galaxy unfolded before them, a tapestry of infinite possibilities. The mood aboard was a mixture of exhilaration and apprehension, and the excitement of the unknown was tempered by the enormity of their task. Their first destination was the Rim of Shadows, a region of space where the last known traces of human activity had been recorded before the Great Eresha. The place had sparse stars and thick darkness, a fitting metaphor for the mystery they sought to unravel. Throughout the journey, the crew settled into the rhythms of interstellar travel. The ship was not just a vessel but a mobile research facility. While engineers monitored the star glider systems and navigators charted their course through the cosmic currents, historians and linguists poured over the data from the ancient crystal, decoding fragments of human history and culture. Zalan, ever the scholar turned explorer, spent his days between the ship's library and the bridge, coordinating the mission's scientific and exploratory objectives. He knew that each passing moment brought them closer to the lost human colony to answers hidden among the stars, to a past waiting to be rediscovered. As the star glider pierced through the cosmic veil, its trajectory set towards the rim of shadows, the crew adapted to the silent symphony of space travel. The galaxy's vastness, with its myriad constellations and nebulae, unfolded like a grand cosmic ballet, 
observe through the observation deck's panoramic views. Zalin, ever vigilant and driven by the thrill of discovery, meticulously planned their route, marking each sector where ancient human signals had once been detected. The ship's advanced sensors, tuned to the faintest echoes of human technology, scanned the void for any trace that might lead them to their quarry. Days turn into weeks, and the initial excitement of the journey gave way to the routine of deep space life. The crew's daily activities were punctuated by brief moments of awe as they encountered phenomena not recorded in star charts. They navigated around pulsars that spun like celestial lighthouses, their beams cutting through the darkness. They skirted the edges of black holes whose gravitational dances warped light and time. Amidst these wonders, the crew faced challenges that tested their resolve and adaptability. A micrometeoroid storm pelted the star glider's shields, causing a tense few hours as engineers patched the affected systems. A rogue AI briefly hijacked the ship's navigation in another sector, leading to a frantic struggle in the tech bay as cyber specialists wrestle control back from the wayward machine. Despite these hurdles, the spirit of the mission remained unbroken. Zalan kept the crew focused and motivated, often reminding them of the historical significance of their quest. We are not merely travellers, but the bearers of a beacon that might light the way to lost knowledge. He would say during their communal meals in the ship's galley. As the star glider approached the rim of shadows, the stars seemed to thin, leaving vast stretches of cold, dark space. Here, the silence of the void felt more profound, a reminder of the isolation that space imposed. Yet, it was within this darkness that a breakthrough occurred. The ship's AI, a sophisticated ensemble of algorithms named Lyra, detected an anomaly. This faint, irregular pulse seemed to mimic the patterns of ancient human communications. Excitement surged through the ship as the crew gathered around the main console, watching Lyra refine the signal source. Salen, his heart pounding with anticipation, initiated a deep scan, directing the ship's full sensory array toward the signal. The analysis revealed that the signal emanated from a seemingly unremarkable star system tucked away in the shadows of a nearby nebula. The system was not marked on Federation maps, an oversight Zalen found intriguing and promising. With renewed vigour, the crew set their course toward the mysterious system. The journey there was fraught with speculation and debate. Some crew members voiced concerns about the risks of venturing into uncharted space. In contrast, others, driven by a sense of adventure, argued for the potential rewards. Zalen, Understanding both perspectives steered the discussions towards cautious optimism. As they neared the system, the star glider slowed, easing out of hyperspace to approach cautiously. The star at the center of the system was a dim, aging red giant, its light casting a pallid glow over its surrounding planets. Salen stood at the observation deck, his gaze fixed on the largest of these planets, a blue-green orb that resembled Earth in historical descriptions. The mood aboard shifted from trepidation to wonder. Could this quiet world spinning silently in the dark be the cradle of the lost human civilization? The question hung in the air, heavy with possibilities, as the star glider prepared for a closer examination. The next phase of their mission was clear to explore this planet and uncover its secrets. As they orbited the blue-green world, every crew member knew they were on the verge of potentially rewriting galactic history. The lost human colony, a myth turned into a tangible goal, was possibly within their reach. As the star glider hovered silently in the outer reaches of the uncharted star system, the crew's attention was fixated on the instruments that had detected the abnormal signal. This faint, irregular pulse, an echo from the depths of space, had brought them to a seemingly barren sector, promising the possibility of a breakthrough. Salen his mind racing with possibilities, coordinated the analysis from the ship's central console. The mood aboard was tense and a collective breath was held as each bit of data was examined and re-examined. The signal, though weak, carried the distinct hallmarks of artificial origin. It was structured, periodic and unlike any natural cosmic phenomenon. The ship's AI, Lyra, enhanced the signal isolating its components for deeper analysis. 
The crew listened intently as the first clear pulses were broadcast through the ship's audio system, and a series of rhythmic beats resonated through the cold metal of the ship's interior. It structured like a call beacon, an ancient one, predating even the oldest known technologies in our databases explained jail, the ship's communication specialist, a Xanthieri whose auditory senses were finely attuned to the nuances of sound, Jao was excited as she adjusted the frequency settings, refining the clarity with each tweak. Salim paced slowly, absorbing the information. Could it really be them? Could this be a remnant of the human's technology he mused aloud, more to himself than anyone in particular? The prospect that they were on the cusp of rediscovering a lost civilization spurred him and his team to redouble their efforts. The breakthrough came when Lyra matched the signal's pattern to a fragment stored in the ancient data crystal. This fragment had initially seemed insignificant. The realization dawned on Zalan and his crew that they were perhaps listening to a message left by the humans, a beacon meant to guide or warn. With this new understanding, Zalan ordered the ship to trace the signal to its source, which Lyra pinpointed to a small, seemingly inconsequential moon orbiting the third planet from the star. The moon, barren and pockmarked with craters, revealed little from initial scans. Still, as they approached, subtle anomalies in its surface composition suggested unnatural alterations. We need to land. There's something there, under the surface, Alan decided, his voice firm with command, yet trembling with the moment's weight. Preparations for the descent began immediately, the crew's routine efficiency marked by an undercurrent of nervous anticipation. As the star glider descended towards the moon, the surface grew larger and more detailed in their view screens. The landing site was chosen near the strongest signal emission point, a flat plain surrounded by rugged hills that cast long shadows in the weak starlight. Once landed, Zalan led a small team to the surface, each step on the moon's dusty terrain marked by the crunch of boots on regolith. The barren landscape was bathed in the dim light from the nearby red giant, casting everything in a surreal crimson hue. Using portable scanners, the team located the signal source, a buried structure beneath the surface, its outline obscured by millennia of cosmic debris. As they excavated, the top of a metallic object emerged, its surface engraved with symbols that matched those in the ancient records. It was the undeniable proof they had been seeking. They found a control panel inside the structure, still faintly active, its lights flickering weakly. Zalan approached, his hands trembling as he touched the alien yet familiar technology. When they activated the device, they were greeted by holographic projections and visual records of the humans. The holograms flickered to life, showing images of Earth, human cities, and daily life narrated by a voice from the past. The message was clear this had been a waypoint a path of a network once used by humans to navigate the stars. Overwhelmed with emotion, Zalan and his team returned to the star glider, the ancient beacon securely aboard. They had discovered the undeniable proof of the human civilization's reach and existence knowledge that would forever change the Galactic Federation's understanding of its history. The discovery of the ancient human beacon on the barren moon had ignited a hunger among the star glider's crew, a mixture of triumph and awe that propelled them toward their next objective with renewed zeal. With the beacon's data integrated into the ship's navigation systems, Lyra recalibrated their course, setting their sights on the blue-green planet that orbited languidly around the aging red star. As the star glider approached, the planet transformed from a distant speck into a vivid, swirling orb of blues and greens veiled by white clouds. The surface a mosaic of vast oceans and sprawling continents was strikingly reminiscent of the ancient descriptions of Earth found in the recovered holograms. Zalen, observing from the observation deck, felt a profound connection to the site before him. It was as if the planet beckoned, whispering secrets of a past long thought lost to the cosmos. The crew prepared for orbital insertion, a maneuver executed with precision under the steady hands of their pilot, Talon a veteran of interstellar navigation whose skills had been honed on the frontier worlds of the outer rim. Sensors buzzed and hummed as the star glider slipped into the planet's gravitational embrace, analyzing atmospheric composition, gravitational anomalies, and surface topography. 
initial scans indicate a stable biosphere rich in oxygen and compatible with terrestrial life forms reported sill. The ship's environmental scientist, her voice tinged with excitement. The implications were staggering not only had humans once thrived here, but the conditions for life had persisted, a rare continuity in the often volatile cosmos. Zalin convened the crew in the main briefing room, where the atmosphere was thick with anticipation. This planet, he began, his voice steady and clear, is not just our destination but possibly a home that the humans once cherished. Our mission here is twofold to uncover any signs of the ancient human civilization and to understand the fate that befell them. The descent to the surface was scheduled for dawn, local planetary time, giving the crew time to mentally and physically prepare for what they might encounter. They would land near a large landmass identified from orbit as having extensive river systems and lush vegetation, promising areas for settlement and, potentially, for the preservation of historical artefacts. As the night passed, the crew members checked and rechecked their equipment, loaded exploration rovers and calibrated their personal environmental suits. Zalen, unable to sleep, watched the planet turn slowly below them, its serene beauty belying the mysteries hidden beneath its canopy. Dawn broke with a splash of colours across the planet's horizon, painting the sky in hues of amber and gold. The star glider descended through the atmosphere, its shields glowing softly against the atmospheric friction. Below, the landscape unfurled a vast, verdant wilderness interspersed with winding rivers and towering mountain ranges. The landing was smooth, the star glider touching down on a flat plain bordered by a dense forest to the west and rolling hills to the east. As they opened the hatch, the air was fresh and vibrant. Filled with the scents of flowering plants and wet earth, a stark contrast to the recycled atmosphere of the ship. Zalan was the first to step onto the surface, his boots sinking slightly into the soft soil. He planted the Federation's flag, a symbol of peace and exploration, into the ground, a ceremonial gesture that marked their arrival. In the spirit of discovery, understanding he declared as the crew gathered around, watching the flag flutter gently in the breeze. The exploration team, led by Zalan, ventured into the surrounding landscape, their scanners and sensors at the ready. The forest was alive with the sounds of wildlife, a symphony of calls and cries that spoke of a thriving ecosystem. Amidst the undergrowth, they found ruins and stone structures overgrown with moss and vines, their designs simple yet unmistakably artificial. As they documented their findings, Zalan felt a deep sense of accomplishment and an insatiable curiosity. They had found the remnants of civilization proof that humans had shaped this world. But many questions remained what had happened to them. Were they still thriving elsewhere on the planet, or had they vanished, leaving only these stone echoes behind? As dawn crested over the verdant hills of New Earth, the Star Glider crew set out from their makeshift base, their spirits buoyed by the promise of discovery. Salen led a contingent toward a dense part of the forest where they had initially stumbled upon the ruins of an ancient human settlement. The air was rich with the scent of flowering vines, and the forest floor hummed with the life of an untouched world. Navigating through the thick underbrush, the team reached the ruins draped in a thick blanket of moss and ivy. The stone structures, some still bearing the faint outlines of ornamental carvings, sprawled across what clearly had been a well-planned urban settlement. As the archaeologists carefully cleared sections of the overgrowth, they revealed a paved street that led deeper into the ancient city. Zalan knelt beside a partially uncovered wall, his fingers tracing the carvings. The motifs, reminiscent of terrestrial symbols but with distinct local variations, suggested a cultural evolution uniquely adapted to this planet. Nearby Lena, the team's lead archaeologist, carefully excavated a ceramic pot, which was still intact despite the ages. Look at the craftsmanship, she noted her voice a mix of awe and scientific curiosity. This society was thriving, technologically adept and artistically vibrant. Meanwhile, the biology team catalogued the local flora a short distance away. Dr. Sorens, the chief biologist, was particularly fascinated by a flowering plant whose petals were luminescent. These could indicate pollination by nocturnal insects or perhaps even bioluminescent birds 
he speculated, taking samples for genetic analysis. Further exploration led Zalan and his team to what appeared to be a central plaza surrounded by larger, more ornate structures that might once have served as public buildings or meeting places. The plaza's centre was marked by a statue, now mostly eroded but still hinting at a figure of importance, perhaps a leader or cultural icon. As the team moved through the abandoned city, they came upon a structure that resembled a library or archive. Inside, rows of stone tablets lay in disarray, the etching still sharp enough to suggest they served as records or scholarly works. The team carefully documented each tablet, hoping further translation efforts might shed light on the daily lives of the planet's former inhabitants, their social structures, and perhaps even the reason for their disappearance. Parallel to the archaeological and biological discoveries, the crew's geologists surveyed the region around the ruins. They found layers of sediment that suggested the area had once been near a large body of water, which had receded over millennia. This geological change hinted at climatic shifts that could have influenced the societal modifications observed in the ruins. As the day waned, Zalan gathered his team at the plaza's edge, overlooking the city bathed in the golden light of the setting sun. Each discovery made that day, from the simplest household pottery to the complex urban planning of the city, painted a picture of a civilization that was both advanced and intimately connected to its environment. The exploration of New Earth unfolded a story of human endeavor, adaptation, and perhaps tragedy. As they prepared to return to the Star Glider for the night, Zalan felt joy and melancholy. Tomorrow, they would delve deeper into the technological aspects of the civilization, hoping to unravel more about the mysterious fate of this lost human colony. As the days on New Earth unfolded, with discovery after discovery, the mission's narrative began to evolve. What started as a quest to uncover and reintegrate a lost human colony became a broader, more nuanced endeavor. Within the makeshift command center, Established amid the haunting ruins of what seemed to be an ancient governmental complex, Zalin convened a pivotal meeting with his crew. The walls around them, adorned with faded murals depicting the planet in a bygone era of prosperity, seemed to echo the weight of their discussions. Zalin stood before his team, the weight of leadership etched across his face. We came here seeking remnants of humanity, hoping to bridge past and present, and reintegrate them into the Galactic Federation he began, his voice steady yet reflective. However, we've uncovered a civilization that thrived and vanished under mysterious circumstances. Our mission now must adapt to these truths. Zalan proposed re-evaluating their objectives. The mission should focus from mere rediscovery to a comprehensive understanding of the societal and environmental dynamics that contributed to the civilization's development and apparent demise. This new direction would not only provide invaluable lessons for the Galactic Federation, but also honor the legacy of the planet's former inhabitants. The discussions also highlighted the need for a conservationist approach. Dr. Sorens, the chief biologist, supported this shift with compelling environmental data. New Earth is a historical site and a living museum of biodiversity that has evolved independently for millennia. We are obliged to protect this unique environment as a sanctuary for study and preservation, she argued passionately. Acknowledging the validity of her points, Zalin agreed to establish stringent protocols for their interactions with the planet. They would minimize their footprint, reducing the impact of their presence on the pristine ecosystems documented by the biology team. The meeting also touched on the importance of educational and cultural exchanges that could benefit the Federation and any potential descendants of the human colony that might still exist elsewhere. The team's historian, Michael, took the lead in cataloging artifacts and data. We have a unique opportunity to create a living library of knowledge here, he noted. A resource that could act as a beacon of learning and cultural understanding across the galaxy. Furthermore, the discovery of advanced technologies in the ancient data repository prompted a cautious approach to handling such knowledge. The tech team worked diligently on securing backups of all recovered data ensuring that the insights gleaned would not be lost to time again. They also began developing methods to responsibly share these technologies to benefit other civilizations without overwhelming or disrupting their societal development. 
as the sun dipped below the horizon of New Earth, casting elongated shadows across the stone ruins, the crew gathered to formally acknowledge and commit to these revised objectives. There was a sense of solemnity in the air, a collective understanding of their new responsibilities. We are not merely explorers or scientists, Silent concluded, his gaze sweeping over his team. We are now guardians of a past that holds profound lessons for our future. As the first phase of the mission on New Earth drew to a close, the crew of the Star Glider gathered at the edge of the ancient plaza under the deepening twilight of the alien sky. They stood among the ruins of a civilization that had reached the zenith of its glory and then mysteriously faded into the annals of cosmic history. Zalan, looking out over his team, felt a mixture of pride and solemn responsibility. The discoveries of the past weeks had reshaped their understanding of what it meant to connect with a lost colony. It was not just about finding remnants of humanity, but about understanding and preserving a complex legacy. The data they had gathered offered a glimpse into a society that had been both vibrant and fragile, its disappearance a poignant reminder of the impermanence of civilization. We set out to find a lost human colony, to bring them back into the fold of the Galactic Federation Xylan, addressed the crew, his voice echoing slightly in the cool evening air. What we found was far more complex and, arguably, more valuable. We've uncovered a civilization that thrived in harmony with this planet, a testament to human ingenuity and adaptability. The crew meticulously documented everything from the environmental sanctity preserved in the biomes to the sophisticated urban planning in the ruins. The technological artifacts and cultural relics they had secured were now being prepared for transport back to the Federation, where they would be studied and preserved. However, Salem continued, shifting his tone, our mission is far from over. Our goals have evolved, and so must our approach. We are no longer just explorers, but custodians of this world's profound history. We are responsible for protecting these discoveries and ensuring that the knowledge we've gained is not lost again. The shift in mission objectives had been formally ratified by the Galactic Council following transmissions of the crew's findings. The Council had expressed its support for the new conservation and educational directives, understanding their unique position to foster interstellar cultural and environmental stewardship. As the evening turned to night, the crew lit a small fire in the plaza's centre, a symbolic gesture echoing the human tradition of gathering around a hearth. Stories, personal and historical, were shared, weaving the crew's experiences with the narrative of the planet below their feet. Doctor, Soren shared insights into the planet's unique ecosystems, emphasising the delicate balance they had observed. Michael recounted tales from the ancient texts they had begun to translate, stories of love, adventure, and philosophical inquiry that showed the depth of the lost society's intellect and spirit. The night ended with a look toward the future. Zaylan outlined the next phase of their mission, a detailed study of the planet's wider geographical and cultural landscape, the establishment of a permanent research outpost, the ongoing exchange of knowledge with the Galactic Federation. They would also continue searching for any signs of current human inhabitants, holding onto the slim hope that descendants of the ancient civilization might still roam elsewhere on the planet. As the crew dispersed to their quarters, the fire dwindling to embers, Zaylan stayed behind, gazing up at the stars. With all its mysteries and wonders, New Earth was now a part of their lives, intertwined with their destinies. The journey they had embarked on had changed them, not just as scientists and explorers, but as beings connected to the broader tapestry of life in the cosmos. And that's a wrap on today's cosmic journey. If you enjoyed our expedition through the stars and want to be part of our next adventure, make sure to hit that subscribe button.